Hi, Rast. Welcome. Trying to get through the uh, pencils as quick as I can since I know they don't show up too well on the stream, but yeah, we'll get there.
I'm mostly just trying to get some of the basic shapes in here and enough to where I can then just detail it out with the ink. Um, I don't need it to be like super spelled out in the pencils. Uh, I don't I don't really like it to be unless there's a very specific reason. Um, So we don't. Um, just because I'll get a little bored if I <laughs> if I make it too precise in the pencils. Um, but there are times that I have something very specific in mind, and and then I will. I I'll at least parts of it. I'll um, detail out more prescriptively. But for something like this, basically, I'll just uh, give myself uh, kind of the silhouette of each shape, I guess you could say. Um, and then from there, with the with the inks, I can just uh, fill in the interior details. I don't really need much more than that. <clears throat> I always love the silhouettes of like, you know, military figures that are all just like geared up and all that. It's just such a cool mix of like thin and then bulky. Um, I also do uh, digital. Um, I just don't enjoy doing digital as much. Um, I tend to do that more for work or if I'm, I don't know, if I have a, if it's more about storytelling than it is about the art and the process, then I'll do it digitally. Um, but I just, for the most part, I don't see the point in drawing digitally if you can do it traditional because I would rather have an original drawing to show for it not just a computer file so um, you know if it's just if it's for work and the original isn't gonna go anywhere and it's just about getting it done then cool I'll break out Photoshop but otherwise I would rather have a real drawing to show for it um, for all the hours that I put in I just I don't know. Having everything go digital makes me kind of sad just because, like, you know, 
I would never want to go to a gallery show and just see a bunch of digital prints. Like, I don't care about that. That doesn't do anything for me. But if people like it, cool. It's not my thing. But I do. I've done some, I've streamed some digital stuff, and I will again. Because, uh, like I said, there are certain times, especially if I'm doing something more narrative, um, that I do actually prefer to do it digitally because I can get it done faster and get the story out of my head, so to speak. Trying to decide how geared up I want her to be. I think I'll have a little bit of breathing room in places. Hi, thanks for joining. Um, I hope you can see it okay on the stream. It seems like it's coming out okay. I'm drawing the rough a little darker than I normally would. Um, hopefully it'll erase okay. <laughs> um, it should. I, I never really like dig into the paper, so um, it should be okay. I don't know why every time I'm like, I want to give them a really big handgun, but it's too big for what their hands would actually be, so my solve is to just give them really big gloves, and for some reason it just works. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you popped in. Um, yeah, always nice. Did you come over from Instagram? all these Dr. Martin's inks. Um, it came with the standard black. Cool. I assume most people came over from Instagram. <laughs> I don't know how many people are just finding finding me on Twitch directly, but um, yeah, so this set of inks, it came with a normal black, um, which I also love. Um, but I think I want to use their uh, black star uh, matte black just because I love the look once it's down it is just super matte um, yeah but this stuff dries a lot faster so whatever they do to make it really matte it definitely dries faster so you gotta keep uh, cleaning your pen or brush or whatever you're using um, I think I'm gonna go with a pen today, not a brush. 
So I'll just be using a G nib um, that I took a sharpening stone to. Um, just making sure it's clean. Um, yeah, I just filed down on, on the top part mostly, a little bit on the bottom, but mostly on the top to get it to have a, get a finer line when I want it. Um, I love G-nibs, but the standard G-nib doesn't quite get as fine of a line as I want sometimes. So, um, I decided to change that. Ah, Maury, <laughs> that's you. <laughs> How are you doing, man? Yeah, nice thing, at first I wasn't entirely sure if I would push more on Twitch or more on YouTube. Um, but since Twitch doesn't keep the videos indefinitely, I figured that works out. Easy enough to do both then. Right, so I can do the streams on Twitch and then uh, just port them over to YouTube and and keep them. <laughs> well, yeah, man, if we ever hang out again, we can both sit down and sketch. By the way, I passed your work over to the 3D guys at work, just FYI. Um, just because. I know you're usually doing your thing pretty busy. So this you can see that matte black it likes to dry and every now and then you gotta kind of just scrape it off. You don't have to do it all the time. I'm not going to do this every time I dip it or anything. But. Yep. Almost fucked that one up. Yeah, well, what's funny is actually the black that I'm using is not part of those new inks. Um, but I wanted something... Um, uh, I wanted those inks because I wanted something that would 
play well with the India ink and allow me to do some hits of color because with India ink you can't do marker. Um, I don't always want the look of watercolor so um, yeah I needed something. So that's why I got a set of colored India inks. And Maury, to answer your question, yeah, this is pretty much about as tight as I go with my pencils, unless I, I'm just like, unless I have something super specific, but normally I keep my pencils pretty loose. Um, of course, the danger is like I did right here. I forgot what I had intended. <laughs> um, it's okay, we can correct it, sort of. Um, I keep them pretty loose unless I have like, if the, say there's a certain area where I have something very specific, then I might detail that, that spot out more, but I like to kind of uh, keep myself guessing a little bit, stay on my toes somewhat. Um, Otherwise, I get I get bored inking if if it's all like super super spelled out. Um, the the current black that I'm using, yeah, is not uh, what shipped with that set of inks. Um, they shipped the normal black India ink. Um, I like their Black Star matte black India ink. They also make a high carb uh, India ink if you want, like just uber black like I think it's still that kind of typical sort of semi-gloss um, India ink um, but it's like super black high carbon is what that means um, but I like the matte matte black but it dries a hell of a lot faster so it's just something to keep an eye on especially if you're uh, using a brush because it can dry in your brush pretty quick and then you'd have to go through a whole process to try and get it out. And that's just not fun. also done a little kind of abuse test with the inks uh, just to see what they could take and how transparent they were and all that um, which you can see here at least I think you can see um, the white for some reason will pick up the black and I don't know why but the others don't so that's good to know um, it does it with both the regular black and the matte black you can see, not as much with the matte though, it seems. But if you just apply the white ink with a pen, it, it works really well. It's actually pretty damn opaque, which is cool to see. Um, and all the other colors play well with it, so good to know. FYI, little 
ink abuse chart. Um, I don't have a color palette in mind. Uh, honestly, all I wanted um, was was just colors where I could just accent. I love doing stuff where it's just, you know, simple inks, sometimes some grayscale for, you know, shadows and stuff, but, um, and then just like some hits of flat color. And that's, that's really what I wanted. It's kind of how I use uh, markers a lot. Especially with something like this, where it's more kind of uh, tech oriented, I like I like having um, just hits of color from a graphic design standpoint. Uh, I think it's pretty fun. Yeah, I wanted to do that chart before I actually uh, <laughs> dug into a drawing because I didn't want didn't want any surprises. I would have been very sad had some of those colors not played so well because I knew I knew the white didn't because I have some bottles of white already, so I knew that. I couldn't scrub the white around um, without picking up some color, so I just needed to make sure that the others didn't act that way. Or if they did, I, I would know which ones. I wonder if they make like, probably just get any kind of little metal brush to sort of scrape the nib off with a lot easier. I'll have to look into that. Um, just because if you start getting like too much ink drying on it, caking on it, then the ink doesn't run off the nib properly. And which, you know, can be fine depending on how you're drawing. But in this case, I, I want as few 
accidents as I can. Not all accidents are happy. Normally I wouldn't be able to get lines this fine with a G-nib. So that's where the uh, little bit of customization comes in. Um, this is, this is a little bigger. I usually work in my, uh, in my moleskin, but I wanted to do this one a little bit larger. Um, so this is 11 by 17 and I don't normally work, uh, quite this large. Or if I, I mean, I work on 11 by 17 at work, but the sketch doesn't take up that much space. I just like to have the breathing room around the drawing at work. But um, yeah, normally, normally this would be a little bit smaller. <laughs> yeah I do I mean I love that mole skin just because it's so it's such a good size for just carrying around right so here easy enough to show right so that's 
kind of the size difference. This is normally the size that I'm working in. Um, you know, so like a drawing, some of these I can't show, um, right? So the size difference in the drawing It also just depends on what I'm doing. Um, see if we can find wherever she went. There. But if I'm working, if I just happen to be working larger, right, so her figure is bigger than this one, um, just cropped, so. I'm like, damn, I should have done this larger, but whatever. <laughs> um, where do I get inspired for armor like this? It's mostly, I don't know, I'll just, I'll look at all kinds of stuff. I'll look at a lot of sports stuff. Um, like hockey armor, football pads, hockey armor, hockey pads, football pads. Um, but then also still looking at like the military stuff. Um, and, um, but then I'll also look at, you know, old school armor, like that Knights War, like plate mail, and look at some of those, um, uh, some of those shapes and then just translate in translate them into modern materials because right. I think those are kind of fun fun shapes to play with and they're not that different anyway if you look at modern body armor um really not not that different than than the old armor it's just the materials that have changed kevlar and you know liquid liquid armor materials and all that shit But then once I've found, like, so I've seen shapes that I like, I, I mostly just try and do the stuff from memory just because I like to, I like to push myself in that way. Yeah, man, drawing those, I don't mind drawing, like, the little faces and stuff, but, um, to do that, I also have to get right up on top of the drawing, and then I would just block the camera, so that's the other reason it's a little bigger, so that I don't have to do that, and y'all can actually see what the hell I'm doing. Because a stream at the back of my head would not be very cool.
And then also after doing some of this stuff enough, you just kind of learn that there are shapes that you gravitate toward, that you like to draw, and, you know. So I'll just kind of, like, I find those shapes, and then I'll usually just kind of push and pull them as needed if I want to do something a little different or whatever. And, um, it took me a while to kind of find what I liked to do outside of like fantasy um, or something that was more like fashion oriented you know those are kind of the two things that I really liked to do and then over time just after doing like more uh, more and more of this stuff because I was kind of determined to find something in that I was like the shapes are so cool that why don't I like drawing it? Um, so I'm gonna just gonna put a little bit of water in this. Um, <laughs> uh, never gotten a permanent tattoo dot from it, but I have stabbed myself with them. But usually because if I have the quill pens like in a cup or something sitting there unused and the quill is up, because I don't want to, um, I don't want to rest it against the cup indefinitely. Um... So yeah, and I'll be reaching for a pencil somewhere or something and yeah, get a jab in the hand or in the arm if I'm reaching over it. <laughs> um, leaving the ink well open, you know, over time, if you do that enough times, the ink does kind of start to thicken up a little bit. And so I just wanted to add a little bit of water to it. And then the other thing I'll do in terms of just when I'm thinking about the armor is I just, I like to have it kind of follow the natural contours, right? I mean, one, it just makes sense for functionality. Two, um, it just kind of accentuates some of that stuff. Ah, well, thanks for joining us. I have a uh, cigar box guitar from Russia, and I love that thing.
sometimes I have to stop and think about how some of these things might attach. And then it's just kind of remembering, a matter of remembering, like, what you've seen in the past that you might want to use. Of course, the perspective on that thing is all wrong. But, shh, don't tell anyone. One of these days I'll actually research a bit more and find out why military bags, you know, on the utility belts and vests and stuff have so many straps on them. For now, I, they just look cool. But it would probably help to know what all those things are actually for. I'm assuming it's just for a modular reason so they can kind of attach multiple things together and customize as needed a little bit, but I don't know for sure. But that makes sense to me, so we'll just run with that. Cool. Mori knows. I just assumed. Luckily, my assumption was right. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's not such a stretch, but...
Thanks, man. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. I get pretty picky about that stuff, even if they're just standing, like, I need there to be some kind of life to it, right? I had to erase the first set of legs I had sketched in because the just it was subtly different but it was just killing the attitude luckily this stuff the ink is not made with cadmium because scraping it off gets all over your hands. Um, as far as I know, the inks are pretty friendly. I mean, I just, I have to imagine anything, though, that has, like, you know, really high pigment. With a few exceptions, maybe. I have to imagine that, you know, it's still a good idea to limit, um, limit your exposure. Although, apparently, Gamblin claims that their oil paints are, I don't want to say safe to eat, but you could eat them. Like, that's how committed they are to changing the, you know, materials and the toxicity levels and all that shit. Don't go eating your Gamblin oil paints, anyone. PSA announcement? Don't eat oil paints. If you do, I will put you up for a Darwin Award. And we'll all laugh. Because we're a little judgy like that. Just making up some oversized handgun.
Just because I can. Everyone having a good Saturday? I hope so. I totally need to clean my apartment. I decided to live stream instead. <laughs> You know, because drawing all day every day at work just isn't enough. <laughs> I'll clean it tomorrow. And I'll still get another live stream in tomorrow. I like doing the big oversized, cause like, really, who would, who would need knee pads that big, right? But they just look so cool. So we're just gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, I just love how it kind of like accentuates, not kind of, it completely accentuates or exaggerates kind of the extension of the knee and the gesture in that area, so... Um, that's why I like to just play it up. up a little bit so I can get to the bottom parts here
So sometimes the downside of um, making this shit up as you go in terms of the details is that if you're working in pen and you want things to be symmetrical you have to then reproduce what you did on the other side and that can be annoying to have to do <laughs> but it's also kind of a fun challenge you know if you like stressing yourself out which apparently I do sometimes The other thing, if the ink starts to dry on the tip of the nib, which is happening here, um, you can't do as fine of lines. So, reason number 207 to keep the nib clean. <laughs> Symmetry only works if you're drawing head on, Mori. Although, I guess you 3D guys, it works no matter what, huh? For those of you that don't know, I actually really love drawing shoes and boots.
That is the one prop I will give my basic drawing and composition teacher from junior college. Because man, I couldn't stand that guy. But he made us draw gesture drawings of old shoes. He brought in like a big box of old shoes and boots and stuff and at first I was like, oh my god, this class sucks and this assignment is stupid and what the hell, gesture drawings are for figures, not shoes. But as soon as I got into character design, boy was I grateful. I had a pretty damn thorough understanding <laughs> of worn footwear. Still not going to call him a good teacher, though. He would, uh... He would talk about... Because we would have to draw, like, we'd, we'd each pick a shoe or whatever, and then we'd each have to draw it like 30 times no joke he would have us draw the same shoe 30 times and not from different angles from the same angle and of course like holy shit it's fucking mind numbing but he would always boast about how he'll go on location and he'll go back multiple times and he will draw the same location literally like 200 times you know and it's like okay you're not proving anything you're just proving that you're a freak <laughs> but hey cool whatever whatever makes you happy glad I did it glad I'm done with it out of the way, I learned something. I learned something valuable. That's a good thing. Right? I mean, from any class, if you learn even just one valuable thing, then that's not bad. Um, I think I'll probably switch to a brush just for some accents um, I like to kind of mix the two like just some little accented darks I just feel it adds a bit of depth um, uh, let's get the little guy here um, this is just uh, Windsor Newton series 7 number 1 Could use the number two, but that kind of just picks up a little too much.
just allows me to add a little more variety in the mark making um, which is always a good thing as much as I can I try and use at least two I don't I don't like to get too crazy and do more than that but I try and at least use two different mark making tools on any drawing um, just to add a little more like another layer of interest right so it's not just kind of the same the same mark over and over um, and it doesn't need much right? it doesn't take a whole lot to add a little bit more variety But I find having that variety is kind of what'll keep keep people looking around the image and hopefully coming back for more. I got so hectic with this stuff, I gotta Like, where does one form end and the other one start? gonna let that dry for a couple minutes <clears throat> and enjoy our not so hot anymore latte I'm gonna erase the pencil so I just want to make sure the ink is thoroughly dry Looks like it is, for the most part. But, just gotta be sure. And I'm trying to decide, because there, I know I want to put some areas of just like, black, flat black, and I, I don't know which, um, and it's always funny, because chances are like some areas where I put some detail like might just end up being black but it's good to have that option 
just because when you lay that black down, uh, then um, you're editing out, which is sometimes a good thing, if that's what you want. got some ideas. The nice thing is then afterward I can always use that white with a pen and bring back a couple details uh, in, in the black areas if I want to. Thanks Maury! We gotta hang out and sketch soon man. Should we assume it's dry? Yeah, the white ink actually works pretty damn well. I was surprised I hadn't. What's funny is I had a couple bottles of it, but I just hadn't gotten around to using it. Um, what I was using before, but doesn't doesn't mix super well was the bleed proof white this stuff also dr martin's but um i think because it's water soluble this is essentially just a gouache like that's pretty much all it is just an opaque water-based white <clears throat> so it's gouache for all intents and purposes but the way this uh lays down I couldn't bring black back over the top of it uh, the black would just peel up so that didn't work um, but I think that India ink maybe will work better if I want to bring something back over the top that I don't know I'm gonna avoid that on this piece <laughs> until I test it somewhere um, we'll see I've learned now to, when I start erasing the pencil, start at the bottom. Start at the bottom. Because if it does smudge a little bit, who cares? Chances are it's just a ground plane anyway, so whatever. But that'll at least tell you whether it's all dry or not. Uh, so many times I'll just start erasing and start at the head and then smudge. Fuck. Okay. I guess their makeup's running. That's cool. Um, it's also the reason I tend to uh, do my pencil rough pretty light. Like, I don't want to dig into the paper at all. Um, just so that it doesn't take a lot of pressure to erase it. Because one, you don't want to like chew up the paper, right? Luckily needed, needed erasers are pretty easy on paper. So... Um, you know, I haven't... Really, I mean, I have, but it's been a long time. Long enough that it wouldn't be the same. <laughs> right? Last time I tried it, I couldn't draw like I can draw now. So, um, I have not tried black paper and white ink. I've done plenty of mid-tone stuff. Um, but I haven't, it's been a long time. I feel like I actually have a... A book somewhere that's just black paper. I don't know. I have a lot of drawing and painting surfaces that I don't remember. So every now and then I have to go through and kind of take stock of what I have to make sure I don't buy something that I don't need. So. Word. Alright. Let's, uh.
I think I might do some hits of color first and then do some hard blacks. Just because if I put the color over the matte black, it gives it a slight gloss. I don't want that. I'm just going to clean my ink water out. Have it sitting on my gentleman's coaster. I like that guy. <laughs> oh, I'm a total art supplies hoarder, man. But I actually do use them, so <laughs> at least there's that. Um, I want to keep this pretty simple. I don't know if I have an example in this book. Might. Maybe. Not really. No. Um, anyway. Color-wise, I just want the colors to be accents, and I'm going to keep that probably monochromatic. Like, I just want to use one color that I'll hit in here as, like, a graphic design element, and then do some more in black. And we're going to go with this crazy magenta, because she just seems like magenta girl so why not just put some out in there It's just water and a little squeeze bottle. Um, just watering down the ink a little bit. I want it to be somewhat transparent. So normally I would do something like this in marker, but marker being solvent based will smear um, India ink. But marker plays great with like sumi ink is water-based, right? Um, I mean, strictly speaking, India ink is water-based too, but once it dries, it's waterproof. Whereas I don't believe Sumi ink is... So like with my brush pens and stuff, um, Marker works fantastic. But not with this stuff.
Um, by the way, I'm just working on um, Strathmore 500 series uh, Bristol. The vellum finish. So it has a little bit of tooth to it, which is nice. Um, not a huge fan of like the plate finish Bristol, which has that kind of slick, um, almost like the old moleskin paper. Um, it I feel like there's certain mediums that stuff doesn't play well with, so um, not a huge fan of it. But sometimes even if there's a surface I don't like, sometimes I'll still try to use it to see like, come on, there's got to be some way to use this that that works for me, you know? Like, and sometimes I discover something and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'm just like, nope, I hate it, it sucks.
let's throw in some areas of heavy black. This changes the graphic design of the image a bit, which is what I want. I don't know why I'm being so precious with those whites. I'll probably come back and add them later. So let's do that. Tricky part is that this stuff gets so black that sometimes the tip of the brush will get lost against it. And you have to be careful not to go past where you intended. figure that all this stuff is just kind of graphic design so that's, that's how I'm treating it is just wanting to get some kind of an interesting design um, that just sort of pulls our eye around and Gonna do my best not to overdo it.
Thanks, Mori. Um, yeah, man, this black is just fucking cool, right? You should see this stuff in person. Just the mat is is so awesome as a graphic design element. I wish I had discovered this stuff when we were still in school. There would have been a lot of pieces I would have used it on. <laughs> Right? It's like that Vanta black. I mean, not as black as that, but not as douchey either, so. It's so tempting to just, like, use it in a larger space. I really want to do, but I'll save that for another piece. Use uh, use some white. White will just help me to kind of clean up some spots and um, add a couple, add some details in places. doesn't help if I still got black on my nib should just keep like a separate pen for the white but oh well and I don't want to use it too too much because I do like the uh, flat black shapes. In some areas, but...
Nib's getting finicky on me. <laughs> uh, bastard. Um, no, the paper is pretty much as white as the ink. Um, if I put, uh, like, I laid the ink down right there, opaque, and unless I hold it at an angle where it catches the light different, um, you really, like, you can't see it even in person. Like, they're almost the exact same shade of white, which is pretty rad. Try this again. It's like all I'm trying to do is clean up. A couple of these edges. That's it. I don't want to overdo it. What I might do is add just the slightest touch of watercolor. But I don't know, I'll have to think about that. It is a good white, so the only thing with with it is that if you were to use it with a brush, it doesn't, it'll actually pick up the black again. Um, so you have to be kind of careful, you don't, you can't really scrub it around. I feel like the best application of this white is with a pen. Um, if you, if you were doing something where you actually needed to brush it into a larger area, that's where I would recommend, you know, using a more water-based white, like their bleed-proof white, right? Which I'm assuming that's what they mean when they say bleed-proof, is that the India ink won't bleed into this. But you can't lay India ink back over this because it's super water-soluble. So the ink will just wet this and mix into whatever you lay down, so... Um, but I really just wanted some kind of white where I could do exactly this, just do some lines and, and then if I want to come back over with black, but in this case, I'm not going to do that. I think I kind of want to say she's done. I kind of want to add some just blushes of color with watercolor, but I don't know. Kind of liking the graphic design of her right now. So tempting. <laughs> Thanks for nothing, Autumn. Yeah, it's so tempting to keep going with it. What it is, it is great except for that one smudge, which I don't know if you guys can see or not, but it's there because I went to wipe something with the paper towel and there is a little bit of wet ink on the paper towel. <laughs> Ooh, but I bet I could cover it up with that white ink. 
I don't know, I feel like it needs just like a little bit of tone for some separation, but I don't... I don't know. I'm tempted to just do like a... Um, let's see where it is here. One of these... tempted to just do like a India ink wash right so I have like a 30% wash in here and I knock shit over um, right so it's a really light nice light wash I'm tempted to do a couple little shadows with that but Fuck it up, you can't take it back. Thanks. I, I'll have to admit a lot of my ideas um, are kind of random. Meaning they just sort of pop into my head at the time. I agree with you, Autumn. And it's really going to be subtle. And just on certain shapes. And in certain areas. So a little bit of separation. Basically use I'm just using this kind of like I would what I would do with a marker Let's uh, first get a clean paper towel Gotta learn from our mistakes, right? And just dab it off. Just keep it light. Mm. Got to keep an eye on these water pens because you will sometimes get a sudden bead of whatever you have in them in this case it's just uh, I don't know maybe 30 or 40 percent India ink wash um, that normally I use because it gets such cool watermarks, but in this case, I am avoiding those. Yeah, nice thing with this wash though also is that when it dries, it actually dries a, a bit lighter than 
what it kind of goes down as, but yeah, it's uh, gotta keep an eye on. I agree. It is satisfying. And it's fun to, to do, just to like see, is there some little thing I can do just to, you know, give it that last little, little bit that kind of makes it maybe a little more intriguing. Especially for something like this. I don't want it to be too hectic. I don't want to go overboard with it. Um, I just want enough to you know give it a nice graphic design All right, Maury, thanks for uh, checking it out, man. We got to hang soon. For real this time, man.
right, we're gonna call it before I do something I can't take back. With the exception of... There's always one more mark to make, right? Danger Will Robinson. Might do something, although that gun, that needs some love. Again, for the graphic design, I feel like that gun was getting lost. And I just want that to read. Alright. I think we will call that done. I think. Pretty sure. Maybe. Drop shadow. Drop shadow, anyone? Go over the, uh, fun thing with the wash is that I can layer it, so if I want I just kind of push something a little darker. Um, it's pretty easy to, to do that. There. Done. I won't fuck it up. I promise. <laughs> All right. Oh. Let's see, if we can. Uh... Move this guy or girl. Over for y'all. We'll uh, zoom in on her a little bit. I'm always like, ah, am I gonna totally fuck it up? Bit of detail fun. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, Autumn. There she is, in all her black and magenta glory, matte black, gangsta. <laughs> Man, if only Patrick Nagel did, like, cool tech shit. That would have been awesome. Instead, he just did really cool fashion shit, which was also awesome. Alright, gonna call that one done. Um, yeah. Thanks for uh, checking this one out. I will be back with more stuff tomorrow. I don't know what, though. Um, I'll figure it out between now and then. I hope. I think I can.
Yeah. All right, guys. 